Okay, um, this is again, we're on the vowel handout and we're just down below uh, having gone through a little bit of the vocal tract apparatus um, down talking about the larynx or the glottis. Um, and uh, we're going to start with this in part because it's the first linguistically significant uh, airstream obstruction when air comes from the lungs. So actually there is one relevant piece of tissue down here that I, well, more than one that I haven't told you about, uh, the lungs. Of course, that's where air comes from uh, when you're expelling air from your body and you produce most speech sounds by expelling air, right? So it's going to begin with your lungs. Uh, airflow is going to come up uh, through your glottis and into your vocal tract. The first linguistically significant articulator that it hits is your larynx or your glottis, right? Um, and so there's a picture, um, an anatomical sketch of the uh, entire laryngeal structure on your handout here that's on the left. Um, and what it's a little bit hard to see here, um, but what's going on is that you actually have three pairs of cartilages there. Um, and uh, they're referred to as the cricoid, thyroid, and arytenoid cartilages. Um, and you can actually feel this on your own uh, throat. If you feel down your neck, there's a bump that comes out the front of your neck here. Uh, that is your thyroid cartilages. That's the, they're the biggest of the three. Um, and you can actually feel that coming out here. These tend to be somewhat bigger on average uh, for males than they are for uh, females. And um, so it, uh, on men, you can often see uh, the thyroid cartilages coming out as well. In English, sometimes that's called your Adam's apple. Um, and again, uh, this is average differences between men and women. It's not that every single man has a visible Adam's apple and that every single woman doesn't. Uh, you, it, it, it varies between people. But on average, men have slightly larger uh, <coughs> larynxes, and that's why they have more prominent thyroid cartilages. Right? Now, uh, you don't need to remember all the specific details about the names of the cartilages. I just want to give a really full picture of how the, the, the structure works. This is not going to be on the quiz, so to speak. Um, so what's going on with those cartilages? Well, the little guys, uh, which are called uh, your arytenoid cartilages, are actually resting on top of your thyroid cartilages. Um, and they're attached to them by these little folds of tissue that are your vocal folds. And you can rock the arytenoid cartilages together or apart, together or apart, and it brings the vocal folds together or apart. You can see this in the right illustration here. Um, so within that little right-hand illustration, there's two pictures of uh, the glottis, and this is looking down from above, basically, as if you were looking down from somebody's uh, nose or their throat into their larynx. Um, and in the first one, you can see uh, that the uh, two edges of those little white strips are held apart, and there's an opening in the middle. That's an open or abducted glottis. Um, and in the second picture, they're brought together, and that hole has closed. That's a closed or adducted uh, glottis. Right? Um, and so this is something you do with your glottis. Uh, you either bring the folds together or you spread them apart. You do other things as well, but this is a big one. Right? So here are some uh, things you can do with your larynx or with your glottis. Uh, the most important uh, distinction for this class is going to be voiced versus voiceless sounds. In a voiced sound, you pull your vocal folds together, uh, and when air flows up through those pushed together vocal folds, it makes them vibrate. Right? So voice sounds have a vibrating glottis, vibrating vocal folds, right? um, and you can actually feel this. If you pronounce a voiced sound like zzzz and put your hand on your thyroid cartilages, you'll feel it vibrate. Zzzz. If you pull your vocal folds apart, uh, there's no vibration. The air just rushes through and you end up with a voiceless sound, right? So the difference between the sound zzzz and the sound s is voicing. Z is a voice alveolar fricative. S is a voiceless alveolar fricative. And so again, if you put your hands on your thyroid cartilages and say s, you won't feel them vibrate because your vocal folds are not vibrating. That's a voiceless sound. Again, z vibrating, s not vibrating. Voiced, voiceless. There's lots of other things you can do with your larynx. But we're going to 
ignore that for the moment. Um, we'll talk about possibly some other laryngeal sounds later in the semester and definitely next semester. But for now, all, the first thing you need to know and the really important one is uh, voicing, voiced versus voiceless sounds. Um, here's a little bit more detail about how voicing works. And again, you don't need to memorize every bit of this, but I do want to explain that there's a well understood physical mechanism behind this and it relates to what the sound is like, right? Okay, so what do you do here? You pull your vocal folds together, and then air is coming up from your lungs, and pressure, air pressure, is going up because the air can't go through here. Right? Uh, pressure builds up behind your vocal folds, and eventually, if you have your vocal folds in the right configuration, uh, that pressure is going to push them apart just a tiny bit. That's called, uh, so basically, uh, that you can think of that as displacement of the vocal folds. They start out closed, they open a tiny bit. At that point, air rushes through, the pressure buildup here dissipates, that pressure goes away, and the folds snap back together again. Um, that's displacement in the opposite direction. And uh, so this happens over and over and over again. That's a cycle. Pressure builds up, pushes the vocal folds open, Pressure dissipates, vocal folds close again, pressure builds up, so on and so forth and so on and so forth. Um, this is a cycle that repeats over and over again. Uh, in When you're speaking uh, a voiced sound, like a vowel or something, um, it's normal for uh, a male vocal folds to vibrate maybe 80 to 150 times every second. And for female vocal folds, it can be anywhere from 100 to 300 times every second, right? So this is happening very, 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 very fast. Uh, you're not controlling the individual in and out movement of the glottis. Um, what you're doing is holding them together with just the right tension uh, that the voicing will occur when you force air through them, basically. Um, so you're relying on uh, aerodynamic properties to vibrate these for you, but you have to hold them in just the right position in order to get that to work. Right? Okay, so um, here's why this is important. This is a repeating and repeating and repeating cycle. Uh, it's called periodic because it repeats uh, at some period of time, and that's going to produce a periodic wave as shown on page one of your handout here. Um, so there's a lot of different ways to think about this wave. Usually I'll talk about it as a pressure wave. Pressure goes up, pressure goes down, pressure goes up, pressure goes down. Right? But you can also think of it as a displacement wave. It turns out that these are roughly equivalent to one another. Um, so if you start, um, let's think about this as time and this as, hey, where are my vocal folds relative to the center? Well, um, at time zero, uh, so we're going to call this displacement, uh, at time zero, you're going to have your vocal folds um, <clears throat> pushed together. So let's say that this is like distance between them. It's going to be zero at this time. And then um, as the pressure builds up, it's going to push them apart until they reach some openness, right? So now there's lots of distance between your two vocal folds. Um, at which point the air rushes through, the pressure dissipates, and they come back closed again, and then the whole thing starts all over again. This is a sine wave. Uh, that's what this is. It's a periodic wave that repeats. It has well understood mathematical properties. Um, and in particular, we can talk about some different properties of this displacement wave. You could also think about this as a pressure wave. Or, for the physics buffs out there, you can also think about it as a wave of uh, particle velocity over time, or as particle density over time. Right? So there's lots of different ways to think about this wave. Um, and here's what we're going to need to know about it. Uh, every periodic wave like this has um, an amplitude. That's how high up or down it is at any given time. Um, and it has a wavelength. Right? The wavelength is how long it takes for the wave to repeat. So that's roughly one wavelength from here to here. The amount of time that it takes um, <clears throat> for this wave to repeat 
uh, is its period. Uh, and we can also talk about the frequency of the waves. So frequency is going to be um, how many cycles does it go through in any unit of time. The basic frequency unit that we're going to be uh, using in phonetics is hertz. And hertz is the number of cycles something goes through in one second. It's cycles per second. That's what hertz stands for. Um, and so when I'm telling you that uh, a man's vocal folds might vibrate 100 times a second, uh, that would correspond to a frequency of 100 hertz. Uh, and a woman's vocal folds might vibrate 200 times a second. That would be a frequency of 200 hertz. And it just refers to how fast this guy's vibrating. Um, when your vocal folds are vibrating, uh, it corresponds to a voiced sound. And we also sense or perceive how fast they're vibrating as the phenomenon that we call pitch. Pitch is something that we hear. Frequency is something physical. Pitch is something in our minds that we perceive. Um, so you can have low pitch or high pitch in your speech, just like you can in music. Um, interestingly, if you want to know where your larynx is, um, try doing this. Pick any vowel sound and go from super low pitch to super high pitch and back down again uh, like this. So put your hands on your thyroid cartilages and go, oh. So low, high, low, you're going to feel your entire larynx moving up and then moving back down again. Um, and the reasons why that happens are a little bit complicated. We'll talk about it next semester. Uh, but it's just a nice way to get a sense of what is your larynx and where is it. Um, and you can feel it there, so it's kind of neat. So, uh, when your vocal folds are vibrating, they produce a pressure wave or a displacement wave or however you want to think about this wave. Right? Uh, that propagates, uh, this pressure wave in particular, propagates into your vocal tract. So um, all of the changes in particle uh, position and velocity and density here are going to send a wave up into this big wide world of your vocal tract. One thing you can do at this point uh, is to change the shape of your vocal tract. Maybe by moving your tongue tip or your tongue body or your tongue root. Maybe by raising or lowering your velum. Uh, maybe by protruding or closing your lips or not doing so. You can change the shape of your vocal tract in many different ways. Um, and that's going to change the way that this pressure wave coming out of your glottis uh, bounces around up there in your vocal tract. Um, again, for the physics buffs out there, what I mean is actually resonate. But you can think of it as bouncing around. That's a useful way of thinking about it. So changing the shape of your vocal tract, which changes the resonance or the way that the wave bounces around inside there, that is how we make vowels. That's what a vowel is.